Bitcoin right now is at a critical point. What happens next with Bitcoin is likely going to decide the direction of the entire cryptocurrency market. Is Bitcoin going to become unstuck and pump past $50,000? Well, if so, it's going to drag the rest of the cryptocurrency right up along with it. Or are we going to lose support and Bitcoin will drag the rest of the cryptocurrency market down with it? In today's video, I'll be examining that for you. Also, make sure to stick around until the second half of the video. El Salvador right now is less than a week away from releasing Bitcoin into the country, which is very, very exciting. But of course, not everyone is happy about that. So I'll be breaking that story down for you as well. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that is a topic that you are keen to learn some more about, make sure you subscribe to Lark Dave's channel. Gently tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and click on the notification bell to know when I put out a new video. Real quick before we do begin, if you want to earn a safe and simple passive income on your cryptocurrencies, check out Celsius, you can earn 6.2% on your Bitcoin, 5.35% on your Ethereum, 8.88% on your stable coins. Lots of great rates, up to 17%, in fact, for some other altcoins as well. Use the link down below to start your Celsius account and you can get up to $50 in free Bitcoin. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the charts. Bitcoin is just stuck, man. Stuck. Look at this. It's just stuck here. It's been here for a very, very long time now. Uh, really, ever since August 20th, when we first made our attempt to try to get over $50,000, we came up into our zone of resistance here. Bitcoin, of course, has been struggling, attempted multiple, multiple, multiple times to get up in here. But every time the price started getting up here around $50,000, sellers stepped in and pushed the markets back down. On the flip side, we have been defending the 200-day simple moving average as our line of support. We can see it acted as a nice line of support here. It was a very good bounce. Right now, we we're coming back down kind of close to it, kind of close to it. Yesterday's candle wasn't super awesome. Um, obviously, we have a lot of time left on today's candle close to see how that plays out. But we're just stuck right now in this zone. And this is a very, very interesting moment for Bitcoin because this is the kind of moment that tends to come before volatility. Because what we've seen over the last few weeks, that's not really volatility. Now, we had some great volatility to the upside here. I mean, that's nice. We love seeing that kind of volatility. Nice correction here. That's also good volatility. Nice blast upwards here. And now we've just been basically ranging freaking sideways for about two weeks now. What happens next at this point, I think, determines where we're going to go probably for the rest of September. I'm still very, very bullish regardless of whether it's up or down. Uh, for the end of the year, for what happens in October, November, December, historically tends to be very, very good times for the market, very volatile times for the market, we should say, usually to the upside. Now, if we can rally the troops here, get the Bitcoin bulls back on board, push us back up over $50,000 and actually have a decisive breakout get this gigantic green arrow out of here. If we can actually have a decisive breakout above this purple box here, that would, I think, be a very strong signal to the Bitcoin bulls that, hey, the party is back on. We're about to retest all-time highs here. We, of course, need to have a breakout followed up with a bit of freaking volume, man. Obviously, a very, very important factor in a breakout move. You can see, look how good the volume was here in that um, uh, breakout when we started getting up over here. Nice move, very strong volume, moving right up throughout that as an example. Right now, we haven't had any serious volume in either way because most of the market is waiting. They're waiting because they want to see what the big orange guy is going to do next. Oh, sure. There's also a lot of people, a lot of money's just gone into NFTs and that people are out there flipping NFTs, making crazy amounts of money doing that because this is the thing. I like to talk about Bitcoin because Bitcoin tends to be a good... 
um, indicator of where the market is going. Right now it's going sideways, which means altcoins are doing very well. If we had a breakout, it would also drag altcoins up with it. But if Bitcoin breaks down in a significant way, that will drag the wider market down along with it, which I think is what you're seeing in terms of this sideways price action. Everybody's waiting to see what Bitcoin's going to do. We've been stuck basically moving sideways for two weeks. If we break above 50K, then you're going to see the market commit. Then you're going to see a lot of traders hop on board. Then you're going to see a lot of spot buying and that'll push the markets higher. But everybody's waiting for that confirmation. We've had a lot of rejections. So we haven't had that commitment yet from buyers. On the flip side, we haven't had a break of support yet either. Now, if we do lose support, then you're going to see people selling and then wanting to buy lower, which could lead to a cascading sell-off effect potentially in the market. This is where you see a 10, 20% correction come in, for example. I am personally, as I've noted before, watching $42,500 as a key line of support and also $40,000 as a key line of support. That's if we lose support at the 200-day moving average. That's where I'm looking for buys for Bitcoin. I've also got a lot of buy orders in, not a lot of buyers, but some buy orders in for Polkadot, for Terra Luna, and for Elrond. Those are the altcoins I'd be looking to accumulate on a dip if we do get one. Now, historical voodoo comes into play. September tends to be a month where we see corrections coming in. At the very best of all of the last 10 Septembers in the crypto markets, most of them have seen Bitcoin closing lower by the end of the month. It's usually a red month. The few months where we have had a green month for Bitcoin in September, it's been very, very mediocre gains, two, three, four, five percent, something like that. Very small. Maybe this September bucks the trend. Maybe we get a Bitcoin ETF announcement. Maybe we pump to the moon. But until we break one of these levels, either 50K or 46K, which of course where the 200 day moving average is right now, until we have a definitive move in either direction, I think we're gonna see a lack of commitment in Bitcoin from the wider market and that people are gonna keep playing the altcoin game as long as that train keeps riding. People are gonna hop on it. People are gonna be keeping to flipping those NFTs. People are gonna keep you know, trading the major altcoins which have been doing very, very well recently. But uh, let us not forget that all those altcoin traders will have their eyes on what the big boy is doing because if Bitcoin breaks down, it will take the rest of the market along with it. And here's one other quick thing I wanted to point out here for you. So this shows us that there was 1.65 million Bitcoin that have uh, moved on chain between $45,000 and $50,000, which is basically where we're stuck at right now in this range between $46,000 at the 200-day moving average and $50,000 at resistance. This is a super critical area right here for Bitcoin. And it's very interesting to see how much Bitcoin has moved around in this general price zone. So $31,000 to $40,000, nearly 3 million Bitcoin moved on chain. That presents itself as a very, very important area of price support for Bitcoin. Because, think about that, if you bought Bitcoin there, you probably don't necessarily want to sell it right now because, yeah, you're up 50% or something like that, but you bought it there because you're waiting for it to go to 100K. And if you... Um, you know, if you bought it fifty seven thousand to fifty nine thousand dollars, where at one point three three million Bitcoin moved on chain, well, you're in a slight um, slight loss right now. But you know, you're not getting out here. You're only down, you know, ten twenty percent. It's not that big of a deal at the moment. You're hodling on. If you held through all the craziness already, you're probably still going to be holding here. So these are very, very important areas of support. And again, that's remember I mentioned that uh, forty thousand dollars. It's also one of the the v, very, very key areas of support. Forty two thousand five hundred and forty thousand dollars. If the market corrects, if we lose the two hundred day moving average, I'm not saying that's the most likely thing to happen, but if it does, that's the areas to watch. And you can see 
here we go. We've got this gigantic chunk of Bitcoin, which acts as price support, right? Because people are not want, going to want necessarily want to be cashing out in that area. They bought in that area. We'll probably have more buyers coming in in that area. It's a very, very important level for us. So that's the critical point. Everybody's waiting to see what Bitcoin is going to do. Bitcoin, what are you going to do, man? Could you let us know? Could you let us know? That'd be awesome. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll find out very soon. Now, let's talk about the El Salvador news. So El Salvador now less than a week away from releasing Bitcoin as legal tender within the country. They are creating a $150 million Bitcoin trust to help facilitate the exchange between Bitcoin and U.S. dollars for users of the the Chivo app that they're going to be um, releasing to help people take Bitcoin payments within the country. Now, you remember, too, that every person in El Salvador is eligible to get $30 worth of Bitcoin. So that would be a nice jump start for the Bitcoin economy in El Salvador. So this is, again, it's very exciting. I'm very excited about this entire story. It's so cool what El Salvador is doing. And it just reminds you that for all the, the price speculation and fun we like speculating on price we we're here for the revolution but also would like to make truckloads of money in the process or protect our wealth of course when we're talking about bitcoin make truckloads of money with altcoins protect our wealth long term with bitcoin because that's the uh, the role of bitcoin in a portfolio but bitcoin it's the money of freedom think about all of the international remittances that a country like el salvador receives and how those rapacious middlemen take so much money from these hardworking people trying to send money home to their families. Bitcoin will help get around that barrier for people. And people can send, if you're working in the U.S., you can just send Bitcoin home to family members in El Salvador. And they can just spend Bitcoin out in the street doing stuff. They can go buy groceries with Bitcoin and any of that stuff, which is obviously very, very cool. Now, we also see Bitcoin... Um, locally having a big impact because, as discussed before, something like 70% of people in El Salvador have no bank accounts. They are they're out of the banking system, but they do have mobile phones. They do have mobile phones. The mobile phone ownership in El Salvador is incredibly high. It's, uh, I think it was 1.4 mobile phones per person, which means that on average, most people have, or enough people have more than one phone, but almost everybody's got a phone, which makes cryptocurrency payments a perfect disruption potential so it's really really cool to see and of course as we mentioned before too just a refresher here in case you forgot el salvador uses the u.s freaking dollar imagine that they're using the u.s dollar in el salvador they have no control over the monetary policy of the currency that they use in their country it's decided by another country that's crazy stuff man you're so much better off at least having your monetary policy decided by mathematics which is of course bitcoin now i'm excited about what's happening in el salvador for those reasons just mentioned and others but not everybody is excited skepticism grows in el salvador over the cryptocurrency gamble so here is a protest in San Salvador on Friday, you can see the, this is a little trick here. If you are a reporter and you would like to make a crowd look bigger than it is, you go get the people to stand in a line, take a picture of them down the line, so you can't really see who's behind them. Other angles of these photos have shown that there is like, you know, a couple dozen people at best at this big protest against Bitcoin in El Salvador. There's always going to be somebody, right? But uh, for the most part, it seems that uh, people are on board with the Bitcoin thing coming in El Salvador. Sure, there's a few people that go out there and hold signs up saying, no, Bitcoin, Mrah. but it's very, very, very minor. Although, although, let's dissect this a little bit. If you look at the media, if you look at the media, what stories do we see in the media? El Salvador's president faces protests over Bitcoin law. Skepticism in El Salvador ahead of Bitcoin launch. 
retirees in El Salvador protest against Bitcoin adoption. And other bad stories. You know, this is protests breaking out again. Bitcoin adoption. Very few positive stories here. Al Jazeera actually reporting that uh, can but Bitcoin cut remittance costs. The answer is yes, it can. Dramatically. And of course, this one from Forbes a few weeks ago. Can developing nations follow El Salvador's move? I think a lot of them should. I know we had a lot of excitement from a lot of countries just after El Salvador announced this a couple months ago. But we didn't actually have a lot of follow through. Panama was rumored to do something. Panama is another great candidate for Bitcoin because they're another country stuck sucking off the teat of the dollar. Paraguay, they did some Bitcoin legislation, but it wasn't anything close to going towards a legal tender status. Uruguay was looking at some crypto legislation. Again, nothing like going towards legal tender status. Argentina made some rumblings. Brazil made some rumblings, but nobody Nobody really followed suit. I think everybody, all these legislators in other countries are actually waiting and watching to see, well, what's actually going to happen in this experiment? Because it's a pretty bold step that El Salvador is taking here. And those other guys can be a bit more timid and just, well, let's let their experiment play out for a few months before we also uh, go down that route. And we also have to remember that aside from the media, which is garbage, obviously, we also have big institutions which are not happy at all about what El Salvador is doing. So this is an article from the IMF. IMF warns El Salvador about the risks of Bitcoin again. They can't stop wagging their finger at El Salvador. This is an inadvisable shortcut. Now, 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 now. The IMF, of course, is a an international mafia-like organization that comes in and Kind of like the Godfather, they come in and say, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. That's how they deal with developing nations. They totally screw them over time and time again, although they act like the good guys. They are not. They are a weaponized organization, a weaponized financial organization. And of course, they're not happy to see El Salvador breaking away from dollar dominance and going towards Bitcoin, something that they cannot control, that they cannot manipulate. Although with these upcoming Bitcoin futures backed from the CME ETFs, Wall Street seems to be making a pretty strong gamble towards being the ones to control the price of Bitcoin. But that's another story for another day. Wall Street, man. Wall Street, always out there trying to screw the regular guy. Anyway... Your question for today. What do you think about the current price action of Bitcoin? We're just stuck right now between 46 and 50K. Do you think we're going to break up? Do you think we're going to break down? Curious to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.